I'm going to use two prime. And I'm going to use one, two prime, three, and four. Remembering that when I use those, I left something out of my model, right? That's important, all right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to make a graph in which I'm going to put k here and I'm going to put p here. It's a lot like my old graph, but the big difference is I am going to put k and p rather than k and r. Okay? All right, so if I put k and p, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to substitute this equation into here. I'm going to substitute from here, I'm going to substitute in terms of r. Okay, so I'm going to have two equations. One, let me call it equation 5. My first equation, equation 5, is going to be k of t is equal to d of r plus delta p of t minus p dot of t. Okay, everybody? Okay, that's my one equation. That combines one and two prime, right? I've used one and two prime now. One and two prime. I'm then, equation six, I'm going to combine three and four by substituting in here. I get k dot of t equals minus delta k of t plus i of p of t, okay? That uses 3 and 4, okay? All right? Now, what I've done successfully is I've gotten rid of i and r, and I got everything in terms of k, p, k dot, and p dot, which means I can draw a phase diagram. Everybody seen a phase diagram before? The phase diagram is a diagram that tells me how k and p will move starting from any given point, right? Because I can calculate k dot and p dot by solving these equations. You give me a k and a p, and I'll solve these equations for k dot and p dot. Actually, it's not that hard to solve, because if you give me a k and a p, k dot pops right out of 6. And if you give me k and p, then I just figure out what p dot has to be to make this work, right? So it's pretty straightforward. Now, whenever you draw a phase diagram, it's always useful to look at the equations k dot equals 0 and p dot equals 0, right? Those are the two, like, places where k is constant and p is constant. Well, let's first do the k dot equals 0. Well, that's pretty easy. That just looks like my steady state supply equation, right? That's where I'm producing exactly enough to offset depreciation. So my k dot equation looks k dot equals 0. Now, how does k move on each side of that curve? Well, if I go up, that's going to increase i. So above this curve, i is higher, so k must be going which way? k is going to the right here. And down here, k is going to the left. Right? Everybody agree? Yeah? Now, what does the p dot equals 0 equation look like? Well, p dot equals 0 is like the steady state demand equation. It's like a steady state demand equation. It slopes down. It comes through here. This is p dot equals 0. Now, what's interesting is what, how do the dynamics go? Well, if I'm below this curve, then p is low. If p is low, then I got to make p dot low in order to compensate, right? I got to keep, I got to make them make up for each other. So below this curve, I'm going down. And above this curve, I'm going up. Okay, like this. And down here, I'm going down. Okay? So now, if I'm going to get to my steady state, how do I have to get there? Well, I got to get there like through here. There's going to be some stable manifold 
this is a saddle point type graph. So the stable manifold is going to come in like this. I got to be coming, P's got to be falling and K's got to be rising if I'm coming in this way. And this way, I'm coming in this way. Okay. All right. Now, you might say, what would happen if I started above this line? Does anybody know what would happen? What would happen? I'm going, I'm going to go here. And then eventually I'm going to hit, hit this curve. And then P dot's going to change sign. And I'm going to go off that way, right? Because this is P dot equals 0. So it's, I got to be moving horizontally here. And here, I'm going to go like that, right? That's how the equilibrium is going to look. You know, look something like that. Now you might say, well, geez, if I start at the wrong point, I'm going to blow off to infinity. I'm going to go off way up here or way down there. But now you're acting as if I can just start at any old point I want. But remember, economics doesn't say you could start at any old point you want. Right? Economics says you've got to start with the right P. You can't start with the wrong P. And the idea that you have to start with the right P is exactly the idea you have to start on that line. Because that's the only point that's going to make the present value of rents equal to the present value equal to the price. These paths do not satisfy 2. They satisfy 2 prime. But the only path that satisfies 2 is this 